Hi ladies and gentlemen, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth and today I want to share with you how to pick dividend stocks. There are many ways to invest and I know there are many strategies out there but you are, if you are into dividend stocks, please do not miss this video. Okay, let's begin. The usual disclaimer, pause and read it if you need to. Okay, there are only two ways to make money from the stock market. I'm not sure whether you are aware of that. Um, if you know the third way or the fourth way, please let me know. But I only know there are two ways to make money from the stock market. So the first way is called the capital gain way, which means that, for example, you buy a stock for $10 and eventually you sell it for $20. So you profit the difference of $10 per share. And that is a capital gain by itself. So you need to buy something and you need to sell something in order for you to reap a return. Right, um, and it also works on the short selling side. That means you sell something more expensive first, and then you buy it back later at a cheaper price. So, it uh, short selling in itself is also a form of capital gains. Okay, <clears throat> when it comes to the second way, we are, we know is the dividends because stocks are companies, and companies have businesses that can make money and generate profits. And when the management decide to give some part of these profits as dividends to the shareholders, that's where the shareholders get their dividend gains. Okay, so you can imagine it's like a goose laying an egg, a golden egg. Okay, it doesn't look golden here, but just imagine, all right? So every time or regularly, the um, they gives out dividends and just keep collecting and collecting. It can be very endless and you do not need to sell the stock away. So which means you do not need to slaughter the goose that lays the golden egg. So that is the beauty of the dividends um, gain. Whereas for capital gain, you must always sell it in order for you to capture some of the profits. Right? So these are the two main ways. Um, I do know that the capital gain is usually a more popular way. Um, the return seems a lot bigger and um, there are many styles of investing that requires you to capture capital gain, whether be it value investing, growth investing, um, the price, the share price need to appreciate at some point in time for you to have the capital gain. But whereas for dividends, you can really just buy and hold and continue to collect the, the regular payouts from the business as long as continuing to prosper, right? So I'll focus more on the dividend stocks uh, in this presentation, right? So how does a company pay dividends? I uh, just simplify the income statement over here for you to understand. So imagine a company make a revenue of $1,000, right? And it costs $500 for the company to uh, provide this service or create this product. And uh, net net, it has a $500 earnings, okay? So this is what the business get to keep. And let's say the management decided, oh, actually I don't need so much money in the company. And I decided to say, um, maybe out of that $500, I'll give $250 and pay them as dividends. Okay. So one key thing about dividend stocks is that they must be profitable, right? If they are not profitable, um, they won't be able to give dividends, right? So if it's a loss making company uh, over accumulated over a long time, they won't be able to give dividends. Whereas a company that has been making money and generating earnings, positive earnings for several years, um, it will have the ability to pay out dividends. Okay, So in that sense, um, uh, you need to look out for companies that are already profitable. right? And sometimes that's it, right? Um, a company may not be profitable for that year, but cumulatively they have been profitable in the previous years, they will still be able to give out dividend on that loss making year. It is possible, uh, but of course it is not sustainable if they continue to make losses in the future. All right? So this is something that you must understand. Okay, There is um, um, earnings to be made. Right? So sorry about this uh, irritating notification. Okay, Let's carry on. All right? uh, what is payout ratio? Right? That leads on to the next part which I talk about what payout ratio is, uh, essentially the, the formula looks something like this. Okay, dividend payout ratio equals to dividend paid and divided by net income. So net income is like the earnings that we saw just now. Okay, All right, and the dividends are dividends paid as, as the name suggests. Okay, I will give you an example over here. Um, let's look at McDonald's, right? Everyone should know this company. Okay, if you're feeling hungry, uh, call the number and deliver to your house probably uh, you will get it by the end of the presentation, um, uh, hopefully, all right? <laughs> and this is in FY 2020, okay? Um, they made, they made $4.7 billion, okay? So this is their earnings, 
or their income for that year, for the entire year. So they made $4.7 billion. That's a hell of money, right? And they decided to give $3.7 billion as the dividends, okay? so which is pretty generous as well. Right? So if you take the dividends given out divided by the earnings, you'll get 0 0.8. So this is called the payout ratio or the dividend payout ratio. And how do you know uh, this number is good or bad, right? 0 0.8, what does it mean? So as long as this number is less than one, it's considered sustainable, right? That means um, um, in this case, for McDonald's case, they are paying out 80 cents for every dollar that they earn. So they are, they are, they are um, paying within their means, right? If the payout ratio is more than one, means they are paying out more than they have earned. So you know that in that case, that's not sustainable. So 0 0.8, which is less than one, it suggests to you that McDonald's dividends uh, that was paid out in 2020 is sustainable, right? So that's one um, important metric to look out for if you are a dividend investor. And the second thing is that uh, you must also not forget about the cash flow, right? Because profits may not be cash. This is due to the accounting standards uh, that are being used. Uh, it's called the accrual accounting standards, which means that um, profits or revenue are recognized when the products are delivered or whether the service is delivered, okay? Um, whereas in a cash flow statement, um, if you haven't received the cash, you cannot clock the cash inflow. Right, so it can be a case where a company may de deliver products first and collect cash later. So in this case, the income statement will look very will look very good. Earnings can be very high, but in fact, it can be very cash poor if they don't manage to collect the cash from their customers in time. Right, so there may be some uh, discrepancy between the income statement and the cash flow statement. So in this case, we want to check one more thing that's known as the free cash flow payout ratio. It sounds similar to the dividend payout ratio previously, right? So instead of comparing to the earnings, we are comparing it to the free cash flow that comes from the income uh, that comes from the cash flow statement, right? So we are taking from uh, information from another financial statement that's equally important as well. Right. So the formula is pretty simple. Uh, on the numerator, it's the same. You have the dividends paid out as compared to the free cash flow that's generated by the company. Right. So again, we take McDonald's as an example in financial year 2020. Um, the dividend payout is the same, right? $3.7 billion. These are the dividends. And this $4.6 billion is the free cash flow that's generated by the business, right? Real cash. You can really redraw it out and smell the money, count it if you want, but don't because $4.6 billion, okay? <laughs> and if you take the numerator, divide by the denominator, you'll get 0 0.8. Again, we want this ratio to be less than one in order for it to be sustainable, right? Because dividends are usually paid out in cash. Unless it's a script dividend, the dividends can be paid in shares. But most of the time, companies uh, will pay it out in cash, right? So if it has to be paid out in cash, the company must generate enough cash flow to pay it out as cash. Otherwise, if they only have profits but no cash flow, they won't be able to pay out the dividends in cash, okay? So this is why the free cash flow payout ratio is important as well. Okay, let's carry on, right? Next, we come to this metric known as the dividend yield. I guess this is something that is familiar for all the dividend investors out there, right? Just want to make sure you get it correct. Okay, so I'll explain it. Um, so dividend yield is just annual dividend per share, okay, divided by the current share price, right? That means how much you can interpret as how much are you paying um, the stock in order for you to receive the dividends is expressed in percentage terms. Okay, so again, let's look at McDonald's in FY 2020. Um, it have given out $5.16 per share as dividend and the share price was $224.20. So if we divide the numerator by the denominator, we'll get 2.3%. Okay, so this is the dividend uh, yield in this case. Okay. And uh, is this 2.3% good or bad? Is it good or bad, right? It's hard to tell if you just look at it uh, by itself, okay? Um, one way to ask is that, are you happy with a 2.3% dividend yield, right? Um, if, you, if you pay uh, for this McDonald's shares today at $224.20. If you're happy, then this is the price that you're okay to pay. If you're not happy, then you probably have to wait for the, for the price to go down and the yield to go up. Okay, so this is one indication, but I'll tell you when to buy a dividend stock. 
Okay, so I'll give you two ways to do so, right? Which I think is uh, good enough. Okay, there are of course many other ways that you can value a dividend stock, but um, I would prefer to use these two methods, right? So the first is to compare the dividend yields with similar companies. So you compare across. Okay, this is something that you can understand. I'll give you examples later. And then the second way is to use this historical dividend yield range, right? Because the share price of McDonald's will change over time and um, um, the dividend yield will also change as the share price changes, right? So you will be able to see where is the higher limit and where is the lower limit of this dividend yield. That will give you some indication whether this 2.3% dividend yield is it good or bad. Okay, so let's look at the first one first, which is comparing with industry peers. Okay, so we can see McDonald's is over here, right, at 2.3%. Okay, this is an increasing order. And uh, let's look at some restaurant like Chipotle, which is the Mexican Grill, quite a popular stock. Doesn't pay any dividend because it's still going very fast, which is natural, right? Starbucks, okay, is at 1.7% dividend yield. Wendy's is at 1.7 as well, and the closest competitor I would say is Yum Brands, which contains uh, consists of your KFC, right? Uh, is at 1.9 percent. Okay, so at 2.3 percent, actually it is on the higher side compared to its competitors or industry peers, right? So on that note, actually it isn't expensive. Okay, uh, just want to go back a little bit on the dividend yield. Right. So why do I say not expensive? Okay, because for a dividend yield to be high, the numerator has to be high or the denominator has to be low. Okay. So in this case, when the yield is higher compared to the rest of the companies or the rest of the peers, it also suggests that the current share price of McDonald's is not that high. All right. So we can see that dividend yield itself can be used as a crude valuation metric if you want to. Okay, especially if you are focused on dividends, I think uh, this is one of the key ways to do so, right? So, um, which means your McDonald's is relatively cheaper than the other peers in the industry, right? Compared to its dividend yield, okay? Compared with their dividend yields, right? So that's the first thing that we can see. And um, the other things that, uh, 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 the other method that uh, I like is to compare with its dividend yield range. That's in the past, okay? So you, you can see that uh, another thing is um, the, the, on the top here, it's called the dividend per share. So every year you can see that div, uh, the dividend per share goes up, okay? It has a long-term trend, right, going up. This is good news, right? Because that means that McDonald's is making more money and the ability to give out higher dividends each year also uh, increases, right? So that is the, the one positive sign that you can see from here. And then the second thing, this is the yield range that I'm talking about. Okay, because as share prices changes, the dividend yield will change as well. Because remember, the share price is part of the dividend yield calculation. So if this fluctuates, the dividend yield will also fluctuate. Okay, so you can see 2.3% is here. Alright, um, and it went as low as probably about 2.1% over here. This is a past 10 years. This is a 10 years uh, period that we're looking at. And then the highest point here is 3.5%. Okay, so that will give you some indication where the highs and lows are. If you take a look at this past 10 years uh, historical uh, trading range for the dividend yield uh, for McDonald's, at 2.3, actually it seems like it's closer to the, the lower limit. Okay, that suggests to you <laughs> historically uh, McDonald's um, um, is not trading at a dividend yield that is that high. Okay, so or you can conclude that the share price isn't that attractive. Right, so sometimes you can see that you may get a varying kind of uh, information or, or kind of uh, uh, indication, right? So when we compare to the other industry peers, okay, we started to see that um, uh, McDonald's is actually more generous and the dividend yield is higher, means that share price is not that high. But when we compare to its history, it tells us that actually McDonald's is trading at a higher price range as compared to the past. Uh, when we look at its dividend yield, uh, trading ranges, right? So one way, one way is that um, to compromise, okay, you can take it as uh, maybe you want to wait a while, right? And uh, let's say it goes to around uh, 2.8 or 3%, right? Somewhere in the middle, okay? Then it becomes a much better um, uh, range to buy from, 
okay so that is give you some rough indication right so that's that's what i prefer right uh, to me valuation is never a precise number it's always a range and uh, when you're roughly there is good enough means it's good enough okay don't need to do very complex modeling uh, i think uh, most investors don't have that time or the expertise to do so and you don't want to be um, you, you just want to be roughly correct instead of precisely wrong, okay? <laughs> so it doesn't mean that a more accurate model is better, but if your inputs and assumptions are wrong, then no matter how precise your answer is going to be, it's not going to help anyway, right? So I prefer um, you just use logic, simple logic, broad logic to determine where the fair price is. I think you, you, you should do well, okay? So um, another point that I made just now was that uh, notice that for McDonald's the dividends actually grow over time, right? So you can imagine that the 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 golden egg that they that the McDonald's lay, right? It just keep going up and up and up, and that the good thing about this is that uh, you may buy it at let's say today at two point three percent, okay, um, and your share price is fixed, assuming that you never add any more position, right? Your share price is fixed around two hundred twenty four dollars, right? Uh, but as the dividend next year increases your u actually goes up right your u actually goes up over time so that is a good sign right and that means you get more and more money and you just only buy once right so um, in that sense maybe um, how you evaluate it maybe you're okay to buy at 2.3 percent dividend you because uh, you believe that in the future it can increase right and there are another kind of uh, dividend stocks that, you know, it, it, it stopped growing. It's just very stable. Um, the cash flow and the earnings are very stable, but the dividends don't grow. So in that sense that the dividends will be flatter. Okay. Another characteristic you will find is that for the dividend stocks that they don't grow, usually their, their dividend yield uh, starts off at a higher, higher percentage. Right, that's to compensate for the lack of growth in the future. So uh, the market is willing to price the stock at a cheaper level. Right, as compared to uh, a growth stock, okay, or uh, slow growing stocks uh, that's giving increasing dividends over time, um, they tend to price it at the lower range first, and um, because you know you will get the higher dividend payout in the future plus some capital gain as well. Okay, usually the stock that does not increase its dividends, does not increase its profits, does not increase its revenue over time. Um, usually a capital gain is very minimal if any okay so there are two types of dividend stocks i think um, uh, it doesn't matter right which one um, uh, you prefer all right just understand the, the implications okay just understand the implications and um, uh, also your time horizon right if your time horizon is shorter then i think that uh, um, starting off with a higher dividend you makes more sense right you get an immediate cash flow uh, while um, one that grows over time the dividends you will probably need to wait a few years to see sizable dividends uh, that's coming into your portfolio all right can and um what we have seen so far are all historical numbers okay and we know that making uh investment decision purely based on history is not a very sound strategy and that means that whatever you invest in you have to look forward but the problem is we do not have a uh, 20 to 1 end of the year financial results for McDonald's in this case, right? Uh, because it's in the future. Even uh, you ask from the CEO, he can't provide you or even the CFO can't provide you with it. They can only give you some projection and that's it. So financial data itself is always historical. So how can we then uh, look forward, right? And see whether these dividends can be sustained by McDonald's going forward. And that's where I think that the qualitative analysis is necessary, all right? So qualitative analysis is different from uh, quantitative analysis. As the name suggests, quant uh, means that we use a lot of numbers, whereas qualitative means we can't explain by numbers. And this is where uh, we look at um, uh, something else, such as like the business models, the prospect of the industry, or even you want to look at the management as well. Um, that's possible, right? All these are very qualitative in nature. There is no number to justify, and you have to just piece up together to make a, a conclusion, right? Whether this is a good business or not. Okay, so, for example, maybe uh, we talk about McDonald's have been growing their dividends, right? In the past 10 years, can McDonald's continue to grow the dividends in the future? 
right for the next five years for the next 10 years okay um, um, the way I see it is that it's possible all right um, probably tap on new markets that they have they are not uh, having a major market share okay uh, or they can also in existing market uh, capture more market shares in existing market okay that's another way and then the third way is to increase price right uh, to keep pace with the inflation you increase price revenue will go up profits will go up dividends will grow up so i do think that there are many avenues for mcdonald's to continue to grow all right and it's a very familiar brand um and uh something good about food or food brands is that you know the mouth is a very sensitive place people usually don't change their taste buds um uh consistently okay so maybe once in a while they'll try something that's not usual right but i i don't know about you sometimes you know when you go overseas uh, uh, the first thing you try is uh, something that's familiar okay in a foreign place and mcdonald's usually come to mind all right um, uh, so i do think that they have some advantage over here in terms of the very strong branding okay so i don't think they are going to go away all right um they are Companies should be able to grow steadily over the next uh, five years, ten years, for all we know, right? Until uh, maybe humans we can genetically be changed or altered that we don't need food anymore. <laughs> Otherwise, I think uh, they will continue with that trajectory. Okay, so that that is how um, uh, a qualitative analysis example is being done. Of course, there can be more things to be looked at, but I just wanted to give you a short example on that. And uh, lastly, it's very important. Okay, are you confident about the business? All right. Um, um, it's almost like what the Wall Street bets people say, right? You know, we like the stocks, okay? Uh, it sounds like very emotionally charged, but uh, psychological is very important, okay? Because um, if, let's say, you're not confident about a stock uh, and then the stock price goes down, okay? You will be very fearful, right? And when you're very fearful, you might just do the stupid thing and sell the stock at a price that's very ridiculously cheap. And that's not what you want to do, right? So being confident about a stock, or being confident about our business, right, means it gives you that psychological strength to hold through thick and thin ups and downs in the stock market. Okay, then you just because remember we are talking about dividends over here, right? What you're interested in is the underlying business that's throwing up all these dividends time and time again, year over year, increasing. Um, uh, for McDonald's case, and you just want to hold on to it as long as there's nothing wrong with the business, right? And the share price movement is just a distraction. Okay, and which means if you're confident about a business, then there's less likely to be for you to panic when the share price are down, right? So this is an important practical psychological aspect of investing uh, that I need to share with you, right? So sometimes people buy some based on tips, and you know they are not really confident, and when the share price go down, they panic. Okay, so don't don't get into that kind of position. Okay, um, and another thing that I need to warn you about uh, with regards to dividend investing is uh, this thing called dividend tax. Okay, so uh, this table is generated based on um, the taxation for non-residents. Okay, that means you don't stay in that country. You're investing as a foreigner, right? So you can see uh, some countries they have dividend taxes. Some countries do not. Okay, um, a clue is that usually, usually not all the time, uh, the ex common uh, the ex British colonies or the Commonwealth countries uh, do not have dividend taxation. Right, so like Hong Kong, uh, India, Malaysia, Singapore, UK, of course, okay, have no dividend tax. The rest of the country they range around ten to thirty percent dividend tax. Okay, so um, of course, as a dividend investor, it is better to not have your dividend taxed, and um, um, you will prefer to choose those countries with zero percent. Okay, uh, but that said, right, sometimes if the company quality is really that good. Right. Um, then maybe uh, you want that long term stability or the long term growth. Uh, paying that dividend tax may not be a heavy price to pay. All right. So this is for non resident. Okay. But for let's say you are a resident of that country with dividend taxation, the rates may be different. I just want to think on that. Huh? All right. So as a foreigner, you invest in US stocks, the dividend tax is 30%. Okay, but let's say you're an American citizen, okay, your dividend tax may not be 30%, right? And uh, another note is that for countries where there's dividend tax, the companies also tend to do more share buybacks rather than dividend, okay? Because uh, share buyback is one of the way, all right? It's one of the way uh, to reduce taxes or to defer the taxes to a later stage, 
right? So um, like that's why US companies, they like to do a lot of share buybacks. Whereas Singapore companies, are um, uh, they do share buybacks, but it's uh, not, at a, not, not that high in volume, right? And they tend to give a lot more dividends, right? So the dividend yield is a lot more generous in Singapore where there's no dividend taxation. Right. So this is just one observation that I have, but uh, this can also help you in increasing your dividend yield in countries where there's no dividend taxation. Okay, again, and in summary, right, last slide that I have with, for you, um, just to summarize what we have discussed so far, dividends are one of the ways to get rewarded investing in the stock market. Okay, remember, there are only two ways. One is capital gain and one is dividend. Right. So for dividend, you do not need to sell the stock. In fact, you should not sell the stock as long as the dividends are good and even growing. Right. So you just hold on to the stock and you go for the dividends. Right. That's cash flow that you want. Uh, whereas for capital gain, you always need to sell the stock at some point in time in order for you to capture the reward. Okay. If not, then it's just paper gains, which can be wiped out okay, at some point in time right? because market will go up and down. Okay, so that is one key difference. Uh, there's nothing wrong in uh, going for capital gains. There's nothing wrong going for dividends. As long as it suits your investment objective and your temperament, I think no one can tell you whether you are investing in the right way or wrong way. Okay. So second thing is that company must generate enough earnings and cash flow to pay dividends, right? Because I told you that uh, companies must be profitable. They must generate earnings. Otherwise, they won't be able to pay you the dividends okay if they're loss making for many years or they have cumulative losses they cannot pay you dividends okay um, then sometimes some companies they may have a lot of earnings but very little cash flow because they always deliver their product and service first before they collect the cash for such companies sometimes uh, they may have a very high earnings but they may not be able to pay dividends as well because the cash flow is low so you need to have both earnings and cash flow for a company to pay dividends. So how you go about it is to look at the payout ratio, right? Remember the dividend payout ratio as well as the free cash flow payout ratio. If they're less than one, then it is more likely uh, that this dividend uh, uh, is going to be sustainable going forward. Okay. Um, third thing is that um, how do you know when to buy a dividend stock? Since you're after dividend, so dividend you would become a good valuation metric or a crude valuation metric if i would say so right uh, to tell you whether the, the, the stock is expensive or cheap right if the u is high generally it means that the share price is not expensive if the u is low means that the share price is on the higher side okay so you com compare it with two things right one is with peers okay that means similar companies in the industry and you see whether um, uh, the dividend yield is higher or lower than the peers right and then the second is that you compare to its own dividend yield history, okay? Uh, whether this current dividend yield is it on the higher end or the lower end, right? So you want it to be at the higher end or closer to the higher end as much as possible. If it's in the middle, then it's about fair price, okay? Uh, which is also an okay entry price, right? So this is how I will usually determine, okay? Is to compare with peers or to compare with its trading own trading history, okay? For its own dividend yield range. Right. And lastly, don't forget a lot of all these uh, data or this information are all historical. So we want to go forward and um, uh, look at whether this business can continue to generate this cash flow earnings as well as dividends. Right. Uh, because you buy today, your dividends is going to come in the future. Right. But you don't have the figures and the finance financial statement in the future. So what we're going to do. And that's where you look at the qualitative analysis. Right. Look at the business model. Uh, look at the management. Are they shareholder friendly? Do they give uh, dividends? Um, do they have any expansion plans in the future? Right. If they do, then how much do they need? Because if the expansion plans uh, suck in a lot of cash, then that can affect your dividends. Right. So you want a business that's stable, uh, can grow without sucking too much cash as well. Right, so that's where uh, some of these qualitative analysis will come into play. Um, as I said, I do not like very complicated, complex uh, modeling. Okay, just uh, some um, um, uh, analysis right of the business model, and most importantly, you must be confident about the stocks that you're buying into. Because if not, when the share prices tank, okay, you will be at a loss. Right, you do not know whether you should hold it or you should sell it, and the least. The, the, the last thing you want to is to sell it at a very low price and you make a big loss out of it, okay? And only to see the share price recover later. That's a super nightmare, right? So please don't do that. And if you don't feel confident after even doing all this analysis about a stock, uh, the best is not to buy it at all, okay? Because if you buy it, 
um, you don't know how to deal with the problem later. So the best is to avoid the problem in the first place, right? So only buy uh, stocks uh, that you feel comfortable, you feel confident in after you have done all the analysis, all right? Okay, I hope that this is helpful for you that um, now at least you know uh, with some ideas how you can pick out these uh, dividend stocks, okay? Even though I just give you one example like McDonald's, uh, but that can be done to any stocks around the world, right? Wherever you are, okay? So I hope that is useful, all right? Sorry for the very irritating pop-up, okay? I don't know how to get rid of it. I'll try to think of ways to go <laughs> get rid of it. But thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, leave your comments in the box. And also, if you want to have more information, follow our YouTube channel as well as uh, our, our our website. Right, we write a lot of articles. Drwealth.com. Right, D R W E A L T H.com. Okay, I'll see you the next time. All the best and cheers.